So I think it's uh, already five past um, the, the time that we have planned. Is it, uh, I should ask the committee, is it possible for us to um, start the meeting? Okay. Okay, so um, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our service today is about to start. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sepri. I'm a medical doctor coming from Indonesia originally. Um, I'm graduated from Universitas Indonesia. And currently I'm pursuing uh, my medical, my sorry, my master's uh, degree in nutrition science in Sweden. I live here with my husband and my two daughters. So our fellowship today uh, is made possible only because of his sustaining grace. As we can gather here in the midst of our busyness, coming from different backgrounds, even different countries, it is all because of the work of the Holy Spirit. May his name be glorified through the service today, through the songs that we will sing, and most importantly, through our life. Um, let's prepare our heart to enter the service. I invite everyone to take a silent moment to pray. Dear Lord, we praise you for you are holy, for you are just, and you are merciful. We praise you because you are our loving Father who sustains our life day by day. We thank you for all the blessings that we've got through your Son, Jesus Christ. We are gathered here today, Lord, to sing praises, to lift up our voices um, in prayers and worship, and also to listen to the truth of your word. Help us in our limitations and weaknesses, Lord, to be able to understand your word. Teach us today to be your faithful servants. And may the Holy Spirit illuminate our minds and our hearts and give us joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Let's join the psalmist to praise our Lord. We sing the first song, Blessed Be Your Name. Sing you pour out I 
So today's topic is the Lord of my wallet, and it will be delivered by Dr. Santosh. He is the director of ICMD South Asia region and head of training unit as well. And currently he lives in New Delhi. But talking about money, this might be um, sensitive and a hard topic, but also an utterly important to be pondered about, especially um, as a Christian doctors. In our sinful human nature, we can be deceived and turn this blessing called money become our new idol and or our little god of our own. Therefore, we desperately need his wisdom to be his faithful serpent in managing and handling our wallet. We prepare our heart to listen to the sermon and uh, reflections from Dr. Santosh. Let's sing the next song, Thy word is a lamb unto my feet. <laughs> Thank you. 
we would humbly ask Dr. Santosh to share. Uh, thank you, Sefri, uh, for that welcome and introduction. Can you? I hope my slide is visible. Uh, okay. Yeah. I uh, can see some familiar names and faces around uh, and there are much more uh, experienced people in this room than me so uh, maybe some of them can contribute to uh, at the end to share more thoughts. Now uh, the topic we are going to look at today is, is the, uh, how do you manage the money. Now let me start with some caveats. I may not understand what you are going through. If you look at the except for probably Alex and a couple of others, all, all of us, all, you are much younger than what I am. I'm on the other side of, in one sense. And I've already been a salaried employee and I don't have answers to most of the questions you may have. And more than that, I've been made more than enough mistakes. And I have no sense of finance. Okay, I'm not a finance expert, I'm a pure clinician and I, uh, I enjoy training. And I've only worked in India. but. What I will be sharing is more of things which I have learned over time and things which I have been challenged by. So what we are going to look at two sections, divide this uh, 40 minutes or so into two sections. The first section we will look at some core questions and then some practical issues of life. One of the things we always say is that if God, Jesus is our, our saviour. Now when we say Jesus is our saviour, we also say that Jesus is our Lord. So the quest, foundational question is, is he actually the Lord or just a saviour? You can save our souls, but has he moved from being a saviour to a Lord of our lives? And if he's the Lord of our lives, he's the Lord of everything, which includes money also. So that is the whole question we need as a foundation. Is he the Lord of my whole life, which includes my wallet? and the money which I have and there is all the resources I have. I saw this picture years back in a uh, in a cartoon very interestingly the uh, actually it's a true story which somebody created into a picture. This man was being baptized and as he was going underwater the hand shot up with the wallet because uh, he forgot to take it out. In one sense that is the truth of our life at, at least my life for many years I'm not saying for our life at least for many years it's my life. I mean, when it comes to money, it is my uh, way. Rest can be, you can be the Lord. Now, we also want to look at another issue that we are in a very changing context of our world. There is an evolution of a cashless society. Uh, a couple of few years back, India had a demonetization exercise. The primary purpose was to uh, take, take out some black money. That was one. The other major thing the politician said is, we want to become a cashless economy. So we are moving from a cash-based economy to a cashless economy. At the same time, we are also moving into a credit-based economy. If you look at, you know, uh, I don't know if you ask a question to all of you, how many of you have credit cards? I'm sure 80% would have credit cards. Um, and my, uh, the, in the West, it is your credit worthiness which gives you more credit. So you can, the more credit you take, the more credit worthy you are and the more loans you can take. So the whole context is changing to a cashless credit-based economy. But the word was written in a cash-based or many times not even cash-based uh, barter system, non-credit-based economy. Are the principles still relevant? I believe and I am. Uh, we all believe that biblical principles are unchanging, our foundations matter. So it is based on these two foundations. One foundation that the Lord is the Lord of our whole life. Two biblical principles are unchanging that we are going to look at the next 35-40 minutes. Let, let us put some, some uh, foundational questions. Let me put one question to you. All of you might be getting money or money from either your parents or your students or from your job. It comes into your bank account. Your bank account is in your name. Say Hedwin. I am calling out Hedwin because Hedwin is my friend. You know, Hedwin gets X number of money from ICMDA or his dental practice. The moment that money comes into your bank, whose money is it? What do you think? It's in Hedwin's name. It is Hedwin's bank account. He is the owner. Is the money 
headwinds ke yes, snow Hmm. You can respond if you want. Um, we can have an interactive session. The question is, whose money it is? That is the foundational question. Uh, if it is Hedwin's money, Hedwin has full freedom to do what he wants. But the question is, to understand this, if God is the Lord of our lives, Jesus is the Lord of our lives, all what we have is His. Even the money which in our bank, which is rightfully ours, is not ours is his if it is his it is the question is it is not how much of my money i'll give to god but of how much of god's money will i keep for myself the ownership principle it is god's money given to me as a steward you know this um, golem in uh, um, lord of the rings the he found the the ring actually the he didn't find the ring the story is the ring found him and he was so overtaken by the ring that he called it the precious the precious owned him that ring was owning him i remember at a point of my you know as a young family in missions working i had every other day i'll get up and look at my passbook it was pre mobile pre internet era it was hard passbooks of bank accounts i was so over occupied with the little money i have it is not about the amount you have but the whole worry that was constantly worrying me and i remember I, a couple of years back a year and a half back i retired and i got the of my savings back and every other month i'll open the account and see now on mobile and how much is there there is that ability of the money to take over become my precious to control me but that is where the ownership principle is to be very clear it is not mine it is his how much of his i can use how can i be a steward now then the question is if god is the owner of my money can i own property you know the story two stories one the story of the wise young ruler he comes to jesus and said i want to follow you jesus said sell everything and come back he asks a couple of questions he answers it pretty well he says that you know i know all the law i know what to do i know all those he looked at him and loved him and said sell all the property and come you look at the story of the first century church they were selling all their possessions and giving to everybody and common pool is that what do you want does god want these are questions to grapple with i'm not saying don't do it and do it or don't do it but the question is if god is the owner of my money how do i live and use my money let me tell you two stories i won't tell i tell you who it is and i won't tell you the answer and if you want the answer how they behaved later you can ask me at the end this is a young family the husband was a faculty in a medical school the wife was a resident and they got ma- they married and they had a child and this is uh, in india it is a typical uh, this thing when you get married and have a child the first thing everybody do will do is to take insurance in the name of the child or on the on the name of the parents so this family had no interest in taking it but a close friend of them was a insurance agent so he came and pressurized them and said please take it is good for your baby you know when that child becomes son becomes 20 years he you will get a large amount of money you are both working in a medical college you have enough money a small amount putting what is the problem under pressure they did it three or four years down the line they were planning to thinking about moving out into another area of work and suddenly they felt god is calling them to a rural mission hospital there are two choices one was a reasonably well paid mission setup the other was a low paid mission setup at the end we were about to sign off resign from here and move on there the they suddenly they suddenly realized if they pick, pick up the low paying job they may not have enough money to pay the insurance premium which is monthly they were left with a question should we take it up or should we just give up what would you do what would you advise me give up the insurance and take the low paid job continue with the insurance and take the low paid job trust in god continue with the insurance take up a high paid job take uh, money from the parents and cover the insurance what would you do what would be the right decision i want you to think through and put your answers in the chat and i want to quickly look at the chat what the, what your answers are uh, those who want kind of 
give up the insurance, take a little paid job, you know, somebody has said it. They struggled with this question. Finally, they took a decision. I will not talk about the decision they took. Uh, we can look at it later. Continue in children and trust in God to take, to take care of this thing. There is no right or wrong answer. You know, each person will do what they feel right at that point of time. We will talk about it. This thing. Let me continue to the look at another story. These are all true stories. Sorry, my. This is a middle-aged family. They were, had two children. They were in a good job. In a uh, good job means good paying job in a in a, in a city, and uh, during that good job they took a, a car on low uh, on insurance on uh, uh, loan. They built a house on insurance and they had a uh, amount to pay, and then they moved. Suddenly, felt God is leading them into a rural mission setup, which had much lesser. They moved there, and as they were there, they realized the schooling of that this local school was a very poor school. So the, they wanted to send the elder son, child to a good uh, residential mission school, which was far away, but very costly. They got a lot of subsidy, but still it was costly. Two, three years they managed. The third year, the younger fellow also grew up and he said, my sister is there, I also want to go there. Suddenly they realized they don't have the resources. They started calling parents, parents said, we don't have money. Anything. So what would you do? You're, they were very clearly called to be in that place. Again, uh, continue in the same location but sell the car. They, they had a car on loan. They had a house on loan. Uh, how they didn't need it because they were in a mission setup. That was way out in another city. It was kept closed. Uh, uh, the third option was to sell both the car and the house. Uh, or the fourth option was to take the children out of the expensive school. Or leave the mission set up and locate in a better playing job. What would you do? What should they do? If you are there, what would you do? It's uh, again question to think through. Uh, maybe you can put your answers there in your. Yeah, take a small risk. Tell the car, don't sell the house. Houses a little more. <laughs> Longer term interns. I mean, uh, you could think of anything, but the issue is the question of what are our wants and what are our needs. You know, it is Maslow who talked about the needs of a, a, a human being. The basic needs of you know, self, physiological safety, love, esteem, self actualization. Actualization. This is our basic human needs. But what we struggle usually is. Is it what we need or is it what we want? The question emerge, which emerges out of both this question or these theories are, would your financial decisions of today affect you from following God tomorrow? What are those decisions you need to be careful? Today's decisions will affect your choices tomorrow. These two stories were true stories where young families were struggling with questions of choices today because of a past decision they took. Time and time again when I interact with uh, people who want to take a decision for God, one of the challenges they say is that, but we have gotten to this, what do I do? Because I have gotten to this, it is difficult for me now to take it a choice. The third question I want to raise is that, all of us are called to live in line with the greater purpose for God. What are the greater purposes? What is the purpose which God has called us? In Mark 3, when Jesus called his disciples, he gave them four clear purposes. One, to be with him. He wanted to be with him. In that three and a half years, they were becoming like him, being changed into what he was. There was this life being changed into what God is, Jesus wanted them to be. And then the Mark 3 says, they are called to be sent out. And the end of the chapter, he says, when the, his family comes to take, say that you are mad, we want to take you home, he says, who are my family? This disciples. So this is the primary calling for any Christian, to be with him, to become like Jesus, to be sent out by 
him into will into the world to build his kingdom to contribute to the kingdom and through being part of his family calling character contribution community the question is are my monetary decisions enhancing my life purposes and my primary identity that's the question to ask are my fi- financial decisions enhancing that purpose the third question to ask and the fourth question to ask is we all end up doing taking choices are our choices logic based or sometimes illogical i was thinking about the logical choices people made and the illogical choices people made look at that woman with the alabaster jar it was a very illogical choice a huge amount of money saved her for a marriage as a few being broken away that's what that uh, person said this is a waste of disciple said this is a waste of money this is an illogical choice but she was making a choice based on faith and principles of word look at judas he took 30 dollars 30 coins this is a logical choice i can get 30 more into my personal this thing and jesus will come out of the pro- cross anyway he is he can escape out of the this thing he might have logically thought through so we might use logic or maybe illogical but the question is are they undergirded by faith and principles of the word or do the culture the context the family or peers influence our choices that is the fourth question to ask and finally the question to ask is what are some principles to guide us i'm looking at the some foundational questions the foundational most basic foundation is you see the lord of our life is bible relevant for today if so whose money is it are my choices today affecting my life decisions tomorrow are my choices enhancing my life purposes how do i choose what drives my choices and if word has to drive my choice what are some principles let's look at quickly some verses what is jesus trying to communicate here look at these verses i'm moving more of a reflective time just to think through do not lay up treasures for on the earth but in heaven what is he trying to say he was trying to communicate that we are to live in a different perspective not on an earthly perspective when he talks about two masters interestingly he brings the perspective of a mammon god of money it is a spiritual force it is not just cash in hand or a card in your pocket there is a deeper spiritual force behind it he was trying to say that it is mammon it is has a spiritual connotation he was talking about you can create wealth here but are you rich towards god He was talking about your heart, where your heart will end up if you don't have your right foundations. He was talking about your status does not depend on your abundance. At the same time, he was asking for radical giving up. Give up all his possessions. So he was trying to communicate something, saying that, look at your heart. Your foundations, you have to think through your foundations. we are not about this world we can we cannot serve two masters our focus should be to be rich towards god not rich about here at the same time to be wise and he's talking about a spiritual force behind resources and money and calling for a radical choices in our life look at the other statements what is he saying simple statement but profound understanding seek his kingdom and all these things what about that he talks about you know uh, the, the fields the various things you worry about the clothes you the food you eat various things that the routine things of our life we worry about those is it seek first my kingdom and he goes on to say if you what is it profit you know you can gain the whole world look at jesus choices 
the three temptations. The first temptation was to create bread. A very logical choice. You could have easily created bread and given to the whole world. You could have jumped from the pinnacle and did a great, you know, spectacular thing and proved that he is the Messiah. He could have, you know, gained the whole world. He would have just said yes to that evil one. He could have got the whole world in his hands. And But the question is, do we give in to shortcuts for the sake of an earthly reward? Look at others. Why do you spend money on what is bread and that is not satisfying? R delight yourself in rich food. Then he goes on to say, it is much more blessed to give than to receive. And Paul talking about Jesus, you know, the model he, he left for us is though he was rich, he became poor. And the model he again and again through Old Testament and New Testament communicates to us is that God is a God who sends the rich away. This is Mary's statement. He fills the hungry with good things. God is the one who turns the equations around. So let me conclude this section with some biblical principles. What are the biblical principles we need to hold on? Everything belongs to God. He is the owner and he is the provider. I'm not going to go to the verses, you can look at it later. And it's given to us to meet our own needs and others' needs. But much more than that, it is to bring God glory. Through fulfilling our needs and others' needs, we, we need to glorify Him. And the way we use our money reveals our true priorities. Where your heart is, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And again in Timothy, Paul talks to, right to Timothy saying that it's a spiritual snare. And the kingdom principles are totally radical. It's completely against the ways of the world. But the key spiritual secret is learn contentment. Godliness with contentment is great gain. In Whether you have enough or more, you may not have enough. Whether you have little or more, that's not the issue. Are you content? That's what Philip Paul says. I am content in whatever situation I may be. So the first section I want to leave, if you forget everything else, one thing I want to leave for you is to guard your heart, check your heart. Everything is given by God. It is given to us. Why do you live as if it is not received, but you earned it? And for everybody, it is God who gives. Why do you boast as if you did not? So that is an important thing to remember. Check and guard your heart. Remembering that God is the giver of our resources. And constantly clarify your life purpose and see, is my financial choices contributing to that life purpose? Let me go on to the second uh, section of me. But how do, you, how do I live? That's the second question. This is all true theoretically, but practically when it comes to my life, how do I live? I'm going to look at five aspects of it and then conclude in about 15 minutes and then we can. Question is earning. How much should I earn? Now, the question is, will our choices be based on how much can I earn? Earning is, a, is nothing wrong. We, are, we need to earn, but will I, my choices be based on what I earn? Um, let me tell you uh, a couple of things which I have, today morning, I have been um, uh, coming to Delhi a year back, I joined a, a small hospital nearby, nearby, and the last one week I was away in the hospital, away because of a surgery, and I today went back, and I was, I was not supposed to go back today. I was supposed to go back next week, but they called and said, can you come because a couple of patients to be seen. I said, okay, I'll come. The first question which came to my mind was, they're paying me a salary. Are you? Am I giving value for the money they pay? My thought was not about the patient. My thought was about, am I giving value for the money they give? See, how subtly my own mind is changing. One week of being away, I was more worried about, am I giving value for them you know 
ரொம்ப வேணா ஜாயின் டிஸ்பிளே தி ஆஸ் ஹவு மச் டூ யூ வாண்ட் ஐ செட் ஐ டோன்ட் நோ இஸ் எட் இன் இஸ் எட் ஹவு மச் டூ யூ உட் யூ எக்ஸ்பெக்ட் டு கெட் ஐ செட் யூ நோ மை எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் நோ மை எக்ஸ்பர்டைஸ் யூ ஹாவ் டு டிசைட் இஸ் செட் நோ யூ ஹாவ் டு டெல் அஸ் ஹவு மச் யூ ஆர் ஒர்த் தட் இஸ் வாட் த வேர்ல்ட் சேஸ் மை வர்த் இஸ் வாட் ஐ ஏர்ன் வாட் ஐ கெட் ஐ ரொம்ப யங் கேர்ள் கமிங் டு வென் ஐ வாஸ் ஹெட்டிங் அன் இன்ஸ்டியூஷன் அ யங் கேர்ள் கம் ஆர்கனைசேஷன் coming for an interview young girl 25 year old girl excellent believer christian uh, uh, sent to us by the church pastor a close friend he said he is one of the best person you could get into and get for that uh, job i interviewed her she was absolutely fine i offered her a job she said i'll join sir within a week's time and then we handed over her uh, appointment order she looked at it came back in half, half an hour said i can't join i said what happened we talked everything you are very good your heart is right your skills are right why can't he said no it is not right uh, this is not possible i said why i said salary also we talked about it she said no it is not okay then i asked specifically tell me he said you told me 25000k around you be the salary but my previous was 25 plus you are giving me 24.9 i want at least 500 more than the previous i said this doesn't make any difference i can't change because this is a standard scale but it's only about 100 200 difference he said no it is not about the 100 200 it's about the principle i said what is the principle that in my resume it should never go down it should always go up i didn't understand i was a uh, and i started interacting with many young people they realized they are living for the resume they are selling themselves in the market may not be as doctors and dentists but if you look at the it professionals and other professionals they are living for the resume they create the inability to sell themselves this is what i am this is what i am worth and if you don't increase your worth you are losing your status in the society so remember earning is okay but your worth is not in what you earn income is a legitimate reward Proverbs is an excellent book to read through. Time and time again, Proverbs talks about various aspects of money. Even uh, Paul's teachings, there's a very clear teaching on, you know, income is a legitimate award. But the way we earn should glorify God and help others. Look at doctors. I don't know about your country and the countries you are coming from, from the country I am coming from. You know, the cuts and commissions we use. You order an MRI, you get 30% kickback. you order an investigation you get 20% kickback you order some procedure you get 20% kickback you know the way we earn does it glorify god does it help others the systems we are part of are we reaping where you have not sown how why should i get 30% cutback from a from a ct scan i didn't earn it somebody else did it that could have been reduced for the patient but i am part of a system which is perpetuating these cuts and commissions is my earning just for example if you join a corporate hospital with high pays if the top doctor is paid a thousand dollars and the lowermost jo- uh, employee is paid ten dollars you know what the difference is 100 times is it equity would you would i be part of that system and say for, forget it i can what is it? is it just this is the question to ask earning earning is right we need to earn god has given us ability to earn income is legitimate but we need to ask is it glorifying is it helping others is my earning just the second question is okay i have earned but how much should i spend remember the ownership principle how much of god's money will i spend for myself it's not about how much of my god money i'll give to god how much of his money and how will i use always look at this is it a need is it a want or is it a greed it's a gradation you can move from a need to what i i would like to have it it's a want no because the other person have it i also should have it agreed it is more based on a you know comparative life not a or competitive life uh, we have this comparative and competitive life discussions in our leadership uh, groups so how do you decide remember the simple questions you need to ask do i really go through this need want greed cycle 
do i need it can i afford it or can i borrow or hire it having it will it change my life will it enhance god's purpose for my life my having it would i bring suffering to others there somebody else is better having it who am i helping i helping by buying it me or somebody else that is a question to ask and of course try to live within a budget now let me tell you here this is something i am preaching what i have not practiced i have not budgeted ever in my life because i have a spouse who is much more better than me in budgeting but over time she has also given up budgeting because i am also uh, she has learned from me how not to budget so <laughs> which is not a good example for life but budget live within one income budget wisely budget your givings definitely your giving savings things have to be budgeted so practically think through how can i live within the principles of christ gives us and put that into my practice of spending but how much should i give i think this is very important for us to consider consider how you give one of the principles we need to understand is hold it close hold it one hand receive in one hand give out with the other hand don't get too worried when you give hold your money loose look at some of the verses jesus ministry was supported by this women who provided them not out of their savings out of the means giving is not based on our, out of our savings out of our means and even jesus talks about make yourself wealthy you know friends by your being a worldly mammon so that you can contribute to the kingdom so there is nothing wrong and you are expected to give so if you look at biblical principles a lot is there i don't want to go through in detail but just summarizing we are called to give generously it is mandated hold open hands and in paul's teachings john's writings uh, jesus own teaching talks about giving generously at the same time he calls us to be sacrificial look at the story of the how jesus looked at the stand near the temple and looked at the widow putting two mites and the um, pharisee putting something and he said she why did he say that she is better giver because it was from it it was touching her she was giving out of all, all what she had uh, she was giving out of that not out of huge amount it was sacrificial giving at the same time a sacrificial should not be with a downward uh, face with a down face or a sad heart with a cheerful heart sacrificial cheerful sacrifice but paul also in his writings to corinthian church talks about regularly giving and talks about proportionate giving nowhere in the bible in the new testament they talk about tithe we talk about proportionate giving give more as much as you can of course in line with our priorities to take care of our family our extended need, family needs and to honor god and time and time again whether in the old testament malachi they talks about test and try me you test you bring your tithe back and see how will i not bless you god gives a promise and in acts also is there and this look it is very interesting how he said you know give and be given to you good measure pressed down shake into running over and put in your lap now it is not that if you give 10 10 dollars you'll get 100 dollars what god gives is more than money our our own journey if i look at it i have realized that the more we give the more friends we get the more community we get we don't get money back i don't think anybody has given us money back but we have got a much more larger family in the kingdom they become what is given back to us by god and they become people who journey with us you know we can't convert what we give out by money into back uh, and give out thing that god will give us back money no god is saying you will give be much more but if you don't give more, more you you will not get relationships kingdom family community support systems 
God is much more, gives you much more than what he has, we give out. That's true for our own lives. And, to, and what do you give for? Definitely to extend God's kingdom. To those who are involved in his ministry. To, I mean, Paul's writings and the first century church gave to their own, the church, people their own in their own churches and churches abroad. Timothy, to Timothy, Paul writes strongly about taking care of your own family. And Old Testament is full of teachings on how poor should be taken care of. Again, in, in Luke, in Jesus' teaching. And Samaritan story is a beautiful story where anyone who is found in need. Today we were on the way in Delhi, on the roadside. This uh, children, street children were asking for money. I was having a discussion with a friend who was my car. The discussion was, should I give? I gave. He said, you are wasting your money. They are a racket. I judge. I take a decision saying that they are a racket and I said they are not worth giving. But and I was giving and thinking that without giving, I can't talk about talk to you today. <laughs> My heart will be questioned. You know, Jesus would not have asked, uh, judge the people and said, these fellows are has a racket behind it, so don't give money. He was a sacrificial giving without questioning anyone in need. But at the same time, calculate and consider wisely. It is David, at the end of his life, when he had built up the whole resources for the temple, he was mobilizing the whole community to give. And he said, his attitude was, it's a privilege to give back to you. Who am I? Who are my people that we should be able to give as generously? See, it's a privilege to give because everything comes from you. And you're only giving back what you're given. It's a privilege to give back to God. So what is wise? You need to decide what model or work will practice for you. I can't tell you this is the way to give. You might decide that if I get 100, I will live within 80 and 20 I'll give. You might say I'll live with 90 and give 10. You might say, I will live with 60 and live out with uh, 40 or whatever. You take a decision. But set aside that. And get into the habit of setting aside. Never use tight as your standard. Use tight as your starting point. Never comprehend that. And increase. Early in life, one, was, uh, one doctor friend of us challenge us to increase your giving proportionately to your income. Not based on type, but a proportion. Because it's all God's. And our giving should discomfort us. At the same time, make us joyful. A discomforted, comforting joy. Because it is pain us. And always look out for opportunity to give. Hold it loose. The more you give, the more will be given back to you. May not be money, but our hearts will be changed. So, how much should I save at the same time? The problem with saving is, like I told you earlier, savings and become my idol, my security. I told you about the little I had was my idol. I was constantly opening my passport to see. Even a few years, couple of years back, I was looking at my mobile uh, app every day and seeing how much pension money I have in my account. Saving is important. It is okay. But save after priority submit. Then never let it become your idol. Consider your seasons of life and save wisely. For certain three seasons, you will need to save. I remember a period of time our children were in education. We had to set aside every month a certain amount preparing for the, uh, the semester fees. Today that is over. Both of them are working. You don't have to worry about it. There are seasons where you do differently. Plan that. We will see. But remember, eternal priorities are upmost. Think the why, the returns, how much is the return. We need to be wise. If you don't know, ask somebody else. But the way we save should not harm anybody else. Finally, let me think about, talk about a uh, couple of minutes on this very important question can I take a loan many of us may have credit cards and live in debt should we live a credit a loan based life should we or should we not 
maybe i not have a choice i'm starting with a loan we had a session post covid with the dentists in india a large number of them had taken education loans not by them by parents up to equivalent of 20 to 30 thousand dollars and then they took another 20 30 thousand dollars to set up a dental practice and suddenly covid hit they were left with the education loan plus the loan for setting up the setup what do you do you're starting your career with the loan can we avoid it get help in planning but if you are already gotten we'll come to that later but if you want to get in get small start small think about only what you can pay back give low to medium expectations of rate of interest uh, and grow within the means and premium plan but suppose you have ended up taking a problem that's a different thing and certain key borrowing principles if if you have to loan has to be thought about this is financial the thing which i have learned with talking to my fr- friends watch for the interest rates look for fixed interest rate if you're in a tough place look to increase the tenure but your total borrowing should never be more than one third of your income otherwise you'll end up in this i remember at one point of time my uh, one of my children wanted to go to us to study and i had to take a i didn't have the money i went to my bank and i was talking to the bank for a interest for a loan and they said the interest is about 15% i sat there listen to them my father had a house he said will the father give it on the say i heard all those i came out of uh, the bank and was walking home walking towards the thing and called up sarah and my wife this is what they say do we have the ability he said yeah you have to do it you have to do it pray and take that I was walking back and reached uh, travel back to Delhi came back into our mission center suddenly Sarah says don't need somebody heard about through our family that I am looking for this and uh, friends of ours said that we will be behind you let him do the study and pay back us now we never ask anybody fall back on a community create community support systems if you have don't have the ability and i i know many of our friends have that support systems which they have developed as a christian community to journey together but if you already have messed up your life you don't know what to do what do you do from those two stories take difficult decisions maybe you should close downsize take a new direction in life remember you should never compromise on your life purposes get advice from people who can credit give good advice I know that in the covid season many have found it extremely difficult maybe some major choices have to be decisions have to be taken but trust in his providence consider the role of a community we are part of a community we are called to journey together as families who are on a common vision and purpose let me conclude what is told to us is both south asia and southeast asia borrow as much as you can save as little as you can the west you know spend as much as you can give as little as you can in south asia if you come to india we are told earn as much as you can save as much as you can give as much as you can to your own family not outside it is all about your family and your wealth but john wesley says back those days earn save as much invest as much as you can but give out as much as you can there's nothing wrong in earning there is nothing wrong in saving there is nothing wrong in investing in the right way but we are called to give out as much as we can our indi- spiritual health is directly related to our generosity or lack of it wealth is a positive resource but it's hazardous but within a redeemed community there should be enough wisdom and grace to handle it responsibly so what are some overarching principles whose money it is how much of his can i use will my today's decisions affect tomorrow life purposes will i base live based on what the means i have debit or credit or would i live with an emi how should we invest is money a servant or master 
or slave or slave driver where is my heart is it my precious do i have a community who can support me and journey with me am i living a life of faith and dependence on god jesus considers our attitudes to money as a very important formation of a character that's why he talks about this in someone on the mount do not worry is life more than food look at the birds are they not more valuable are you not more valuable can you by thinking about and worrying add one day to your life why do you worry about clothes look at how i clothe them even solomon was not dressed like this if god is like that you know how much more why do you worry about all this those who do not have me run about all this seek my kingdom do not worry god is no man's debtor he will take care of us we live a life in the in in alignment with god's kingdom it is his responsibility our own journey is that he has never been a debtor he has met our needs he may not have say may not have had major savings but our needs have been met that is what god says us so let me end with this picture for you to reflect on are you on the are we on the right track okay thank you um dr santosh we um for such um such a rich material such a rich sharing and full of um wisdom that we got about how we uh, feel this um um financial things and then um there's there are, i think two sections that dr santosh already mentioned that the first section is about the biblical principles uh, behind every um financial decisions that we are going to make and then the second section um dr santosh um, went into some more practical issues so uh there's um good questions um here uh, i would read it to dr santosh the questions come from dr freddy uh, he asked about how we can glorify god with our money uh, because even if we prioritize to give uh, our money to others um, other people wouldn't see it as something that um, coming from god or maybe like um, literally praising god about that about our giving is glorifying god with our money meaning that um, something literally that when somebody says like praise god <laughs> when we give to them or is this an action that please god oh yeah yeah, I, I think the, yeah the, the deeper question here is what is that which glorifies god it's not about where do you give how do you understand what glorifies god what kind of lifestyle what kind of engagement in the world glorifies god let me uh, put the if you give money to a the church as a tight you think it will glorify god because it is god's church god's minister god's teaching but if you give to a poor person on the road who is struggling for uh, food is it glorifying god so if you study the whole question of what glorifies god is engaging in situations where god is moving where god's heart is pained where god's heart is challenged and being part of what god is doing in this world will bring glory to god it's not about whether others will say whether you are uh, that money is glorifying or not it's about am i being part of what god is concerned about where god is moving where god wants to do something about it so for me so um, but we need to be sensitive you can look at a very visible program and say oh this is a great ministry glorifying god and everybody will say very good you gave lot of money to that you might give to an, a person who has no money to eat with in a you know has not no money for the next meal 
nobody is knows knows about it you go and give a certain amount and buy him food mm. which one glorifies god <laughs> this one nobody sees the other everybody sees yeah. that's a question to ask for me the the second one glorifies because you know that person who is praying and asking god for food, next day's food is being cared for by an angel of god who felt moved and god is being glorified so so it's it, it, it doesn't it, it's not a matter of the act but what's behind our motive when we yes. use our money yeah and we should direct all things that we do to glorify god okay mm. that um, yeah thank you dr santa and also i remind everyone um if there's um one or two questions that arise and uh, maybe bothering you about how you um yeah along this time handling your money and maybe you have struggle and maybe uh, or some other questions that might arise you can ask it or you can type it directly to me or um or maybe just raise your hand and unmute yourself and ask directly to dr santos i think it will be fine as well so dr santos um there's a question from anonymous person um he has some someone needy keep asking to borrow money from from this person we have given some money for for many months and that person keep asking and borrowing our money in the coming months how to deal with this situation yeah i think that is where you need to be wise is it is the person taking advantage of our generosity uh, uh, generally i would say you know without knowing the situation you would say like, i'll say keep giving but only in that context you will know you know you will need to judge and see whether is this person dependent on us has become dependent on this give this generosity or is he he or she um, uh, you know uh, trying to use this for other things so you may have to kind of yeah. look, look at other ways in understanding that person's context more have an open conversation or look at other people who can look into their lives and say what is their lifestyle does the lifestyle correlate to what he or she is asking you is is it in line with what she is communicating she or he is communicating to you um but many of them get into a cycle but we need to understand yeah. that it's very difficult for us to understand them i have worked with many years with drug users and i realized when you work with drug mm-hmm. users it's very easy to say that you know to tell them to get out of the habit but they are into a cycle it is not easy for them yeah. similarly people who get into the debt cycle get into a cycle and they take from one place and put in the other place so some of these are much more complex than what we can visibly see externally so we need to be wise in terms of even assessing that we use our frameworks but unless you get into the shoes of what they are going through we may not even understand how much they are into a cycle of debt cycle of dependence yeah so be wise at the same time be generous yeah 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 it's true because um sometimes the form of um our help is not necessarily to give money to those persons it might be like giving consultations or yeah. helping in yes. another way other than giving money so it we need um a broad perspective about this the specific yes. condition yes yes yeah yeah um and also uh, i well personally i have questions because um i'm in the conditions where the the pictures in the middle age of family issue yeah when um yeah there's a specific trend i think in um people in my age called financial freedom where we have the certain amount of money in our bank account for um something like urgency or emergency needs um but i i i don't know but this kind of like um uh, of all people in my age currently working hard to meet this amount of money in order to feel secure 
about their conditions and if something happened they already have this this certain of money and it has some formulations to account to calculate uh, yeah, how much money um uh, should we have as uh, to to be able to to reach this uh, state uh, called financial freedom so to what extent we should consider this Dr. Santos actually because you already mentioned about saving in your presentations before so yeah um see uh, let me put look at from two different perspectives one there's nothing wrong in saving for a rainy day there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong in putting aside money for a rainy day but your dependence should not be on that what you have in in the bank but what on god if what you have kept aside becomes your idol becomes your security there's something wrong in your savings so the question is um, is my dependence on god or is it dependence on what i put aside that is one question to consider in your heart second is is this putting away affecting my giving and life purposes god is challenging me to give 80% out and keep 20% for myself i am sitting aside 80% for myself and giving out 20% is that what so sit with god and ask god you know if after putting aside what i feel i should be giving to god and to his ministry and to all my other needs setting aside is okay but if it is being taken from what god wants me to involve in there's something wrong so it's it's a issue of heart the issue of understanding yeah. god uh, my own, our own journey is that we never had enough ever for a rainy day today we have because we have retired of years of you know saving in our pension or something but we never had today we have enough to survive till probably die probably a uh, couple of few day, one or two decades more that's different but what i'm saying is that dependence comes from having little because we need to fall back on god but the having more is itself a dangerous uh, situation because that can become our idol and yeah x amount is never enough x will become x squared x will become x cubed because there yeah. is that ability for that to keep increasing somebody else will say this is not the best you need to add something more money value is dropping fast so 10 yeah. years down the line this value will drop mm -hmm. so it's a vicious cycle so check your heart but... yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah try not to to make this certain amount of money become our new source of comfortable and uh, our new source of security yeah and then again um we need to, yeah we need to discern um whether our financial um whatever financial um decision is still in line with god's calling to us as yes, his yes. children yeah. thank you dr santosh so i invite everyone who might have questions or uh anything or maybe like just your reflections you know that you got from this session about uh financial stewardship um especially for us as christian doctors because i know that as christian as doctors <laughs> particularly we don't have this um at least in my personal experience i don't have this kind of a good quality of um how can i manage money as you said before dr santos i already i only know how to manage patients how to deal with babies how to deal with uh, pediatric patients for example but in case of uh, how to handle or manage money i know nothing <laughs> my yeah i am yeah i'm a kindergartner in, <laughs> in this situation so i invite everyone my fellow colleagues to um to again to i i'm a first grader <laughs> So you are you are in a higher class than me. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, this uh, yeah, some question uh, a questions arise again. I have seen uh, some Christian doctors choose to become insurance agent. Some problematic ways are uh, that sometimes agents create worry to the targeted clients or standard of money that makes people need to achieve a certain of income. Do you have any comment about this? Is the comment about do you have experience about that? Is the comment about doctors becoming insurance agents or the you know, I think the whole issue about money is a issue of heart. Um, uh, one question is a career. As a doctor becoming insurance agent, what is what he what is he or she trying to do? Is he trying to make a quick money through an insurance agency business? That is one question. Does he need that he or she needs that new business to create more money for himself? That is a question. Two, what is insurance based on? Insurance is based on a risk pooling. Tomorrow there's going to be a risk, so pool your money somewhere and over time small amounts you put into a pool will become a large and when you have a crisis that will take care of it. Good principle. But would it change our dependence on God? Would it affect our security? Is our security on the insurance I have or on God? There's nothing wrong in insurance. Uh, I think, but the saving is equivalent. Uh, the second, that's second, second question. First question is about the person who's become insurance. The second is about insurance itself. Would it shift our allegiance, our dependence? The third question is, what we put aside is it affecting our purposes, life purposes, our savings, our givings to God, our giving to others, over and above that. Definitely, yes, you can. There's nothing wrong in insurance, mm -hmm. but check your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we need to regularly check our our own hearts, our own heart attitudes, heart heart motives mm -hmm. when it comes to yeah. to money. And, yeah, something. And such the a whole issue of a certain standard, certain amount of income. Yeah. Who decides? Mm -hmm. Your class will say. Your social class will say. This is what it is. But if you're part of another social class, a poor, they don't have the standard. Yeah. So who tells you this is important for you? Let me tell you one story uh, in one of our hospitals where we were starting a hospital. One, one and a half years we were rebuilding the place and then the campus was empty. Uh, there was only one vehicle. The week after the hospital was started, we had one consultant and nine junior doctors and I went for a visit. I found 10 cars there high-end cars. So I walked into the director's office and asked, the last three months back when the hospital was closed and we were not doing any work, there was only one car. Today the hospital has started, there are 10 high-end cars owned by doctors here and I can see only one consultant and 10 junior doctors. Whose cars are this? He laughed, he said, the junior doctors, their first job, before they join, for get for salary what they do is get a salary statement from the director go to the bank take a car loan and buy a car i said why it's one part of our country i said why do they do that this is the first job they said this is the first job but their parents and their community expects them because they are the first doctors in the family to have that car now they're all christians they're all believers and I was sitting there and looking at these 10 young doctors who's getting into high-end vehicles at the start of the journey with a monthly payment out for the next 10 years. What would their lifestyle be? There's an expectation from the community, it's an expectation from the culture and the community. They are playing back to them. Is that what we are called to? Who sets the standards for us? That's the question. Yeah. Yeah, there's an interesting and yeah, what's the ponder and what's the think about? There's a person who uh, raised her hand, and um, I think Maria, you can directly unmute yourself and um, ask uh, your question to Dr. Santosh. So while 
while we are waiting for Maria. Um, well, several days ago, I got these invitations from my friend to talk in. So my friend had um, a school, a play, um, no, a play a playground. We just say playground school. Uh, yeah, play, yeah. Sometimes like preschool, sorry. And then uh, she asked me to be um, to to be educator for um, the parents in in this school. And then the team for the school asked me. Uh, doctor, we asked for your rate part. <laughs> yes, how many? Yeah, how many? Uh, yeah, how much money do you ask to pay you for one hour giving it educations? And then I stuck in confusion because I never thought that I should like uh, stamp myself with some <laughs> worth of money just to talk about my expertise so, because I, I never do that. So what you're what you're explaining before that we have to like it, our culture our world culture like uh, press uh, give us pressure to like you should put your worth on yeah how much money because yeah it's kind of like you know, confusion sometimes when we um put the worth of our ourself our knowledge our professional into just this certain amount of money <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's a statement from Freddie which is very true. The ah, way we see and yeah. check our heart is most difficult part in managing money. Our brain is exactly. very clever to make and some excuses and make us actions seem holy. Now I totally yeah, agree. Yeah. And that is the reason why I talk back on community. Create a community mm -hmm. which can question and journey with each other. Yeah. Ask tough questions regarding how your where your heart is. Because yeah. my heart is so deceitful. Mm, exactly. That's why I was telling today yeah. morning about my own story today morning. Today morning I was sitting and thinking, am I giving value for the money I am getting? Instead mm. of worrying about the patient. Mm. My money, my mind went around money, not about on the patient. Mm. It's so natural for my heart yeah. to be deceitful. So thank you, Freddie, for bringing that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We we can make any justifications for our for our financial decision to make it more holy, to make it more more Christian, <laughs> more Christian in terms of yeah how we spend our money. So yeah, thank you as well, Kak Freddy. I know this guy because uh, he is in the same um, small group with my husband. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm still. I guess Dr. Maria is not standby. Maria is not standby. So uh, I, we are open. I think we have uh, a couple of minutes left for this question and answer session. If is there any question arise from any one of you guys? So if there's no other question, then I. I will keep asking Dr. Santosh. I have one question left, Dr. Santosh. Um, one challenge for us as um, as a young um, young family, young Christian status family, especially in our middle age, is to deal with fear and anxiety every time we see our bank account and the certain amount of money that we should we we, we think we should have but we don't have. So. Uh, is there any practical tips or um, what what may be your experience how to deal with this anxiety and how to to live freely freely in, in, in to just trust God? yeah I think uh, my own journey I told, showed you at, at one point of time I was so caught up about what will happen in the future my children's education my parents I have to take care of and there was a constant worry despite being in missions, engaged in missional engagement. That's a natural. But I remember at one point, uh, I was totally concerned about this and, uh, and uh, a, a man of uh, a leader, a Christian leader came to a campus where we were and he asked, what are your concerns? I talked about his concerns. He said, he laughed. And I'm just telling you the story for to uh, bring a point. He laughed. I said, why are you laughing? I'm worried about my children, my parents. He said, why are you concerned? I said, I am concerned. I am the son. I am responsible. He laughed and said, who made you responsible? I said, I am responsible culturally. I am concerned about it. 
he looked at me and said you are not responsible god is responsible don't you think god is more concerned about them that this issues about your children and parents than you i mean it was like a lightning a bolt of lightning a sudden realization that here we are in involved in god's ministry and i'm sitting and worrying about all the issues which god has sim- clearly told seek his first kingdom he will take care of it and he was bringing that truth through a rebuke to me saying that god is equally concerned or more concerned he is responsible not to give it my responsibility i need to be wise i need to be caring i need to be uh, saving i need to take care of it but if i don't have the means he his resources are much more than that we can think or even imagine so you have to come back to that falling back into god's hands and say lord you are in control you know it better than i know thank you thank you for such encouragement dr santa really needed in this such of time because yeah living abroad without any families around is really hard and i have two kids and um, we are me and my husband also students so yeah your yeah it's such an encouragement and yeah give some hope for us. okay so we are going to close this uh, question and answer session um maybe I asked Dr. Santosh to like uh, giving us um, some take home notes or messages from all of this for everyone. Yeah, I think like uh, I have nothing more to add than reiterate what Freddy said. Money is an issue of the heart. Constantly check your heart and create an a system by which you can others can ask you questions about how you think and and engage with that because our heart can be very deceitful but i think at the end of the day remember if we follow god seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and his purpose for us he is able to complete and fulfill what he has promised Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Santosh. We are so blessed and grateful for every wisdom, every sharing that you, we uh, got today. As what I think, as what um, Jesus said, he already makes it clear when he said, "Apart from me, you can do nothing." So we are lacking of wisdom. We don't know how to manage our money wisely or God's money wisely. Therefore, we need to abide in Him every single day and to ask for His wisdom to discern every financial dis- um, decision that we are going to make in our lives. May we, as a Christian doctor, be set free from love of money. May we be, as a Christian uh, doctor, be. Uh, those uh, Christ disciple who lavishly and generously and freely give what we have as we show our love to God and to his people. We are in the end of our service today. Uh, let's return all the glory and honor to our triune God. We praise him by singing the last hymn today. Thank you, Lord.
ask Dr. Santosh to close today's service in prayer. Father, we want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to come and reflect on an important issue which all of us, including me, are struggling with. Thank you for reminding us that all what we have is given by you. You are the Lord of our lives, which includes all what you want to us. There's nothing in our life which is not given. There's nothing which we have earned. Everything is given by you. We pray that as we live through our life with all its challenges of taking care of ourselves, our families, our extended families, our larger needs, we would not forget the realize forget that you are more worried about our lives and we sh we can ever be you are more concerned about our life about our lives and our families and our communities more than we could ever be. and thank you also for reminding us that if you we follow hold on to your kingdom your purposes you have promised that all the other needs will be taken care of. Not our wants, not our greeds, but our needs. And we pray that we would hold on to that and walk the walk of faith with the realization that he who started the work in our lives is the one who is able to complete and perfect what we have started. And as we live, help us to live godly lives with contentment, whether we have less or more to be content in the realization that we are yours and you are ours. In your name we pray. Amen. So this is the end of today's service. Um, you may take silent moment and pray.